What's up guys? Welcome back to Fancy Goldfish Fanatics. In today's episode, I'm going to be showing you my talk that I did at the GSGB event back in September hosted by Star Fisheries. Now hopefully you've seen the first three parts of the event being the goldfish for sale, the goldfish show and how the event was run as well. Now in today's video I'm going to be showing you my talk that I recorded at the event. Now the talk itself is around 27 minutes long. I was very nervous and I did rush through a lot of things I have to say. Obviously it's easy for me to reflect now and I did have a big audience, probably about 40 people watching the talk as well. So apologies if I make any mistakes in the video. I'm not going to go on too long in the introduction but hopefully you can enjoy it. I believe the event was around three weeks ago now, maybe four weeks ago, something like that. And this video has obviously come out quite far after the event, but I had a huge amount of videos I needed to get out before this video came out as well. So hopefully you enjoy my talk. Hopefully it's not too boring for you and hopefully you get some nice pieces of information, especially if you couldn't make the event. But that's it from me. So enjoy and let me know what you think. Hey everyone, thank you all for coming today. Um, as you can see, my PowerPoint is on how social media is affecting our fancy goldfish hobby. How many of you in the audience actually use social media? Please put your hands up. So I say we're about 50-50, um, so it's going to be a, hopefully an interesting PowerPoint for you. Obviously you can see in the background I do have some pictures of my fish, so if I do get a bit too boring for you, at least you've got something nice to look at. So let me introduce myself, who am I? I am the owner of Fancy Goldfish Fanatics, which is a global community of goldfish hobbyists aiming to share lots of information, wealth of information, sharing setups, fish people keep, and I also own Aquatic Elements, which is an aquarium, pond, installation and maintenance company in and around the Surrey area. So my background, so I have a degree in aquaculture and fisheries management, so I did a three year Bachelor of Science degree at the University of Sparsha, which is in Winchester. I've been keeping fish for over a decade and I've worked on and visited ornamental fish farms all across the world from Japan to Poland. Malta, Spain, Scotland, just to name a few, and also I've worked in retail and wholesale aquariums, whether it be from importing marine fish, goldfish, working in fish shops, working for koi dealers, etc. That's just a little bit of a background from me. So these are the main social media platforms that I personally use. There are a few other ones in addition to these, but mainly we've got Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, there's also the other online forums and you've also got Twitter as well, but now we're just going to go on in a little bit to the main ones that I use. So we've also got a few statistics here for you guys that maybe don't use social media. There is nearly 5 billion active users on social media and that is around 60% of the population. Now the average UK UK person spends around two hours and 27 minutes every single day using their mobile device, whether it's on social media platforms or talking to friends, etc. And Facebook, as just one platform, has nearly 3 billion members across the world. So it is increasing, and every year it is increasing and getting a lot, lot bigger. So I thought I'd just put a little statistic on there for you. So generally the BBC gets around one and a half billion views on their web pages per month globally. And one of the biggest, if not the biggest YouTuber, Mr. Beast, actually gets more views at nearly 1.8 billion per month, which really goes to show how a sort of government outlet can even be outcompeted by just someone at home just doing something that they love. So these are the main social media platforms that I use. We've got Facebook, YouTube and Instagram. Now I'm going to go into a little breakdown for those of you who do not know maybe a little bit about those platforms, the way they work and the different attributes each platform has together. So I would say we've got Facebook where you have more of a forum style view, people are interacting with each other, maybe they're messaging each other, speaking to each other. It's a little bit more on a face-to-face, -face, so to say, rather than YouTube, where you're potentially watching informational videos, maybe videos of aquariums or ponds that people are keeping or sharing with an audience at home. 
And then finally we've got Instagram, which is a little bit more inspirational. You're looking at reels, which are short videos, or you're looking at individual pictures of essentially someone's tank, someone's pond, or some fancy varieties in particular. And I will go into a little bit more detail in those as we continue this presentation. So I would say the audience for social media is definitely the younger generation. This is where a lot of young people can potentially get into the hobby, or this is where they find the hobby essentially. Looking through social media platforms, it's really easy to find different pictures of fish that may randomly come into your feed, and that could send you off on a tangent looking at specific fish or looking at a specific tank etc maybe someone has no interest in fish and that might come up as a recommendation on either their facebook instagram or youtube profile now obviously it is a lot more accessible you don't need to be joining a local club you don't need to be speaking to a friend finding out about the hobby all it takes is a few clicks on the keyboard to find out about maybe a fish variety, a way you want to keep your aquarium, and it is really, really easy to get that access. You don't need to be paying for any books or paying any membership fees, etc. but obviously it does come with its mitigations, and we will go on to that further throughout this PowerPoint. As I mentioned, all you need is an internet connection and a mobile device, which really makes it accessible to a lot of people around the world. So starting off with Facebook, my community has over 80,000 global members keeping fancy goldfish, sharing their hobby with each other, diagnosing problems, sharing their tanks, sharing their fish, and basically just communicating with each other. You tend to get up to date topics, we get around 100 posts a day, so for those of you who don't know, someone will create a post, whether they're showing their tank or maybe trying to diagnose a problem, and they then post that to the group, which members can then interact with or reply. And I would say we get around 100 of those every day, so you're getting really up to date information, really up to date conversations. You can also get quite in depth in communication, obviously someone's posted that question and below you having all your comments underneath, they can interact with those comments, you can see who you're speaking to via an online profile, you can actually be speaking to someone face to face or even in messenger as well. And then finally we also have marketplace as well. Now I feel like marketplace is quite good for purchasing secondhand tanks. It's really easy for a younger audience to get into the hobby without breaking the bank, picking up some nice bargains, some dirty tanks potentially that just need a little bit of cleaning up, need a little bit of TLC. Getting into the hobby for really under 100 pounds and buying some really, really cheap products like filters and you can even get them for free on marketplace as well. Now Instagram, Instagram is mainly pictures and videos. You'll be scrolling through reels of fish or aquariums. You'll be looking basically for a visual effect. You're not gonna be seeing any in-depth information. You're not gonna be having much communication. Obviously you can comment like in Facebook, but for your Instagram, you're mainly looking at visuals, looking at maybe a tank or pond that you would really like to see. Someone has potentially put together a huge tank or built a huge pond full of fancy goldfish and that is what you maybe like to achieve or maybe like to go towards in the future and without that visual representation or someone showing you a picture of that maybe you won't know where you want to take the hobby or where the hobby could potentially lead for you as well you can also see lots of unique variety stuff that you maybe never see before which means that you can then speak to your local dealer or you can speak to an importer potentially and say can we get hold of this variety didn't know it existed which leads us into potentially breeding and building different varieties different structures of goldfish which i think is really nice to see on instagram and it's really really easy and accessible next up we have youtube so my YouTube channel currently gets around 75,000 views each month and this could be 75,000 different hobbyists around the world or it could be potentially 30,000 people watching multiple different times. Generally my videos are a lot longer, more informational, obviously I am potentially biased so I do advise watching multiple channels at once and deducing the information yourself and coming up with maybe a treatment advice or maybe a way to keep your tank or stock your tank as well. Now obviously it's universal, so we do get viewers from lots of different countries interacting with 
the videos and mainly I focus on how to guides, tank tours, uh, tours where I feature different ponds, different tanks. I also get regular emails every week, people submitting videos of their tanks for us to share with our community and essentially just creating a nice community hub of lots of informational videos that people can watch if they are potentially new to the hobby or they're looking for an answer to a specific problem. They can look back in the backlog of videos and maybe find some issue that they are looking for. Also feature lots of farms and as I mentioned hobbyists as well. We also get the occasional breeder on sharing their facility which I would say you don't get to see too much nowadays. A lot of the breeders keep to themselves which is totally fair enough. They don't want to share that information but when the breeders do want to share that information and they want to go into a little bit of detail about their tanks, their setups, their varieties, the way they breed their fish is quite interesting to share that with a wider global audience. So these social media outlets let you see a lot of goldfish care and you can get a lot of information simply in a few hours of searching through social media outlets. You can also look at breeding and genetics which is really interesting and hard to look at if you don't have a local community or you don't have local friends within the hobby and it's really nice to be able to see how different genetics play a part together potentially in a video that is broken down into a sort of a 10 minute segment for you to watch at home. Now we also have husbandry techniques which I think is a really interesting one. Rearing techniques, there are so many different farmers out there in the world. You have people keeping goldfish in tarpaulins, in fiberglass tanks, in mud ponds. There are so many different techniques that people use that are really simple and effective and you could maybe give it your own twist on something you want to apply at home. Now food and feeding is a big one, I'm not going to go into massive depth because this is really how social media is affecting and changing the hobby, but obviously you can see how different foods affect different fish, live foods, frozen foods, dry foods as well. And also finally on the habitat, as I mentioned at the beginning when I was talking about the rearing techniques, you can see the different habitats, whether it be a shallow pond, a shallow tank, or maybe something in between. Now, I don't really go, want to go off on too much of a tangent, but I think it's really interesting to see how social media has an effect on trends and how different varieties are potentially pushed out with different body shapes and tail types. Obviously, we have different shaped fish like the Chinese fish and the Thai fish. And without someone bringing in these fish, and if we didn't have social media, we potentially wouldn't know about some varieties that are out there that we haven't seen before. And this is where I go on to the different varieties. Now up here you can see a blue egg phoenix, a very, very rare fish that I personally haven't seen in person. And without seeing it online or in a video or potentially on Instagram, I wouldn't even know it existed. And I think this is where we can see these different varieties, potentially something we want to breed with our current stock or potentially something we want to breed together to create a new different variety. Without social media, you wouldn't be able to see these varieties and potentially get them out there to people in the public. Maybe specific varieties are bred in a really small local area and without publicity of these, we do not get to see them. Moving on to different tail types as well, we have the orchid tail, a much more flowy style fin, a lot more similar, I would say similar to a veil tail with a lot of length to it and in comparison you have a lot, of a, a lot more of a shorter fin like the rose tail here which has more curved lobes and is more in that sort of elongated heart shape. And going on to these tail types, different breeders around the world are breeding fish for specific traits. And it's really interesting to see how social media is pushing these different types. Maybe it be more of a short body fish. People are aspiring to keep these fish. If they are more in abundance, they are seen, deemed to be trendy. And it's really interesting to see the different tail types. I personally have noticed people are going towards more short tail fish, fish that are having a lot smaller compacted tails and also smaller compacted body shapes. Obviously these breeding techniques do take many years to come into effect, but it's interesting to see how popularity, different phases come and go throughout social media. Like we've got the milk cow ranchu essentially, which is a very 
sought after fish and it is gaining popularity because people are showing it on the social media platforms and people then say, I want one of those, how do I get one? As I mentioned, we also have different body shapes as well. We have more of a Thai style fish on the screen. Maybe some of you will beg to differ, but I would say more of the Thai style fish, a longer body. We're not getting so much roundness and plumpness in the belly. And we're not getting an absolutely big wen in comparison to more of a Chinese fish, which I would say is more of a rounder style fish. You've got more depth in the body. You've got a lot more wen, maybe similar to a lion head and you're getting that smaller and smaller caudal fin as well. And the social media outlets are pushing these different style of fish. You may get breeders advertising their fish, becoming trendy within the social media areas, and then people around the world would like to potentially keep these style of fish, and social media is dictating potentially the way that these trends are going throughout our hobby. Coming on to breeding, did mention this point a little bit earlier in the PowerPoint, but it's very interesting to see the way that different hobbyists breed their fish. There are some very, very simple techniques using spawning mops in shallow ponds in comparison to using hand spawning, really sterile environments, getting really, really high fry production numbers and then also the way these fish are fed and the way these fish are raised using different live foods and using different dry foods as well. It's very interesting, I find, to watch long informational videos where people are raising different styles of fish in different environments and without the social media or without being able to see this online, I would find it very hard to find out this information unless I'm essentially speaking to a person one-on-one -on -one or we coming together at an event just like today. So the positives of social media. Obviously we've got worldwide access. It is very, very easy to speak to someone in another country, speak to someone in another city and actually communicate with them. Obviously we have the translation as well, so it's really easy. When someone sends a message in another language, you can click translate generally on all social media platforms and actually see what they've written to you and then it will do vice versa when you send it back to them. Obviously we've got communication very, very easy as well nowadays through obviously WhatsApp or potentially Instagram or Facebook and communicating with these people across the world. Obviously mentioned as well, we have the different goldfish varieties, seeing the different body shapes, the different styles, and these hubs are providing lots of information, lots of information that is, can go back many years and it is always going to be there. Obviously you have fresh information coming out constantly, but for example on a YouTube channel, you can look really far back many years ago, see how potentially that hobby has progressed or that hobbyist in particular and see how things have potentially changed for them. And then obviously we've got the growth of the hobby. This is helping to bring a lot of more a lot more of a younger generation into the hobby as it is making it more accessible for them. And then next up we also have collaboration. Now collaboration is one I find really, really nice because you can have a live Q&A where you can have two hobbyists speaking to each other online virtually and you can have the audience interacting with that. That means that you can gather what information the information you want out of those hobbyists, have a really nice debate as if we were having a conversation one-on-one -on -one here today and everyone around could listen. You can do that virtually nowadays. We also have our video tour visits. Now I can do a tour of someone's aquarium or someone's pond without me even getting up off my living room sofa and it's really interesting to share that with other people at home that maybe don't have the connections in the goldfish world and I think social media is helping to push that out to different audiences. Now obviously I've spoken a lot about social media in a positive light and there are definitely a lot of downfalls to social media as well so you definitely need to be careful when you are out there in the wide world. Obviously we have a huge amount of false information whether that is treatment advice, tank stocking densities, filtration and I would say it's very easy for a new hobbyist to come into the fancy goldfish hobby and fish keeping in general and then head straight back out when things don't go as planned, they have too much information and they don't know what to do. Obviously you've got your keyboard warriors as well, people who just want to pick a fight with someone, tell them they're wrong and not give any helpful information. 
as I mentioned, conflicting advice and also manipulation. It is very easy to formulate a video on maybe your tank that is really, really small and has a really high stocking density because you've simply just put those fish in that tank, videoed it, and then you've removed them. But the hobbyist at home doesn't know that. And especially for new hobbyists, they may think that is the norm and they can keep this number of fish in a system at once. Also, I would say a really important point is the lack of long-term knowledge. I would say there's a huge amount of goldfish hobbyists out here, especially today, that have decades and decades of experience, which definitely isn't translated into social media. Social media has, I would say, has only been around for 10, maybe 15 years, and there is a lot of hobbyists out there that simply don't use it. As I said at the beginning of this presentation, half the room do not use social media, and there must be so much really really good quality information that is not portrayed out there to the wide world and we're really just using new techniques that we've potentially found and i personally don't know any hobbyist that has kept fancy goldfish on social media for more than five years so it's definitely a real real new thing and i think we're lacking a lot of that in-depth maybe old school information that would really benefit us in the current day now we also get poor recommendations, irresponsible practice, incorrect treatments and incorrect tank sizes. I think tank size is a massive one, whether someone says one inch per gallon, one fish per 10 gallons, one fish per 100 litres, and there are so many different dictations which decide whether you can have a fancy goldfish in a certain size aquarium. So I feel like that is a really, really important problem. There is so much different and conflicting advice out there, especially for newcomers to this hobby. It is sometimes really impossible to find out a simple piece of information. And sometimes going to your local aquatic shop or your local dealer, they might not give you the quite correct advice. And having an online presence, you can potentially pull information from different people, but it can sometimes lead to incorrect advice. Maybe you're fish dying and you're getting out of the hobby as quickly as you came into it. Also, you do get a lot of competition on social media. There is definitely a lot of people that grow their goldfish really quickly. Newcomers think that that is possible and they can't achieve it and then they simply don't want to keep their fancy goldfish anymore or they potentially can't keep up with the growth rates that some of these hobbyists and breeders are achieving and they think, why? Why can't I not do that? And there is a huge amount that goes into these breeders, into these hobbyists that really strive for potentially quick growth rates or grooming their fish for specific attributes. Obviously you've got buying goldfish and status as well. There are some hobbyists that really buy very large, high quality fish and maybe some newcomers into the hobby cannot achieve that. They cannot strive for those big fish. Obviously maybe potentially it's aspirational for them to look at, but potentially there are some accounts which have massive goldfish massive aquariums that could be a little bit off-putting for a newcomer that is coming into the hobby that potentially cannot achieve that or does not have the financials to potentially achieve what they would like to. So my hobby and how it has been affected by social media, obviously you can see me swimming in my fish tank, which some of you may not agree with, but I think social media has a huge impact on me personally, and I've learned a wealth of knowledge, especially through YouTube videos, Facebook as well, and there are so many people out there that just want to share their hobby with each other. They don't have a friend to speak to about their fish keeping, they maybe don't have a local group, they might be quite isolated, and they simply want to share their passion and love, especially for goldfish, with each other. Now also goldfish availability. When I first got into this hobby, I could not find anywhere to purchase fish. And without social media, I wasn't able to find anywhere to source those fish. So I think social media has really helped with advertising different companies and different, different breeders as well to increase the availability of fish so they are more attainable and easier to get hold of, especially if you do not know anyone locally, because we are not in a huge abundance as goldfish keepers or high-end fancy goldfish keepers in the UK, so it can be quite daunting and quite difficult to get hold of fish if you do not know the correct ways to get them. And also connections. I definitely wouldn't be standing up here today if I hadn't have found social media and found fancy goldfish because there are so many different people 
here today that I've met through Fancy Goldfish Keeping that are friends as well and that I found out so much information from them. So I definitely have made a huge amount of connections, not just in the UK, but around the world as well with different hobbyists that have connected with me through my channel and through Facebook as well. So in summary, as I just mentioned, connecting different hobbyists, also aspirations, looking at really, really nice tanks, really nice setups, specific goldfish varieties, especially on Instagram, being able to look at specific fish is definitely giving me aspirations on how I want to grow my hobby going forward. Also the access to different breeders and sellers of fancy goldfish. And then obviously we've got the visual and educational content, which I feel like I've gained a huge amount of through social media. Finally, have we got any questions? So that is it for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed listening to my talk. If you did make it through the end till the end of the video, I'm not sure anyone would have made it to the end of the video, but hopefully if you did, you enjoyed the talk and you enjoyed maybe learning a little bit of information about Fancy Goldfish and how I perceive social media affects our hobby. But that is it for today's video. If you do have any questions, please leave those down below. Thank you all for watching. Remember to keep those watch changes up and happy fish keeping.